uh, yes, yeah, so I, I, I don't have to, to explain that uh, uh, I don't work uh, in the Museum of the Second World War uh, anymore. Uh, so uh, whenever I uh, use word we, uh, I mean the former uh, directors, uh, creators of, of the museum, not the uh, today uh, director and, and his uh, advisory board. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very uh, glad uh, that I, I have an opportunity to uh, say you some words about our work and about uh, the museum in Gdańsk. Uh, thank you for, uh, for your invitation. Uh, I would like you to present the Museum of the Second World War. Uh, war. Uh, more specifically, uh, I'm going to explain why this museum has become so hot question in Poland. It won't be, as you said, a non-partial analysis, I'm afraid. Uh, in 2008, 2017, I was deputy director of this institution in charge of development of its permanent exhibition. My perspective is so inevitably determined by this fact. Nonetheless, as a professional historian, I, I work at the University of Warsaw. I will do my best to examine the museum's case as uh, much objectively as I only can. Uh, I don't know if you have traced, all of you have traced discussions around the museum of the Second World War, which, uh, as, as we have heard, uh, were reported uh, in the press uh, worldwide. Uh, so I, I have decided to, uh, to, to show you some basic facts uh, about this institution and to uh, tell you uh, its history and to highlight uh, its main uh, features. Uh, the museum was established in late 2008 by the former Polish government. Uh, it was at that time the liberal government of Donald Tusk, who then left for Brussels, and as you uh, surely know, he is today the president of the European Union. I'm talking of politics because uh, otherwise it's impossible to understand the proper context of events to come. Even if my colleagues and I have never been ourselves the politicians, we uh, were and we are not the members of, of any political party and we haven't got orders from any political party. Uh, <clears throat> the idea to build the Museum of the Second World War uh, was not a political one uh, since, since uh, the very beginning or at the beginning. It was brought up by Professor Paweł Machcewicz, uh, who is a respected historian of modern Polish history and, by chance, a, a friend of mine. In 2007, he published an article in one of Polish leading newspapers in which he suggested to establish such an institution, in Poland, of course. Prime Minister Tusk read his text and decided to take the challenge. Machcewicz was nominated his plenipotentiary for the building of the Museum of the Second World War and the director of this museum and museum itself was established accordingly. Let me add uh, already that Tusk has never interfered later on in our activities on, uh, in the content of museum or of the exhibition. Uh, his only influence uh, over us was a decision to locate the museum particularly in Gdańsk uh, because also other locations uh, were discussed. He decided that it uh, should be located in Gdańsk, in the place where the Second World War began. Of course, this was also his, let's say, political decision. He himself is from Gdańsk and as uh, as, as perhaps uh, politicians from France, as we have uh, heard, he uh, wanted to left uh, this kind of cultural institution in his own uh, 
uh, town. Uh, but Gdańsk uh, uh, was first of all the place where the Second World War began. Between both uh, wars, uh, uh, the city was turned into the free city of Gdańsk under the uh, supervision of the uh, League of Nations. And on September the 1st, 1939, the German battleship Schleswig-Holstein shelled the Polish military garrison on the Westerplatte in Gdańsk, unleashing in this way the biggest military conflict in the history of mankind. So uh, locating of the museum in Gdańsk was a good move, we can suppose. As far uh, as we have noticed then, the, this choice was broadly accepted as a symbolically self-explaining location. The museum was built at the outskirts of the medieval old town of Gdańsk from the ground up. Better to say, it was dug up from the ground as the most of exhibition space is hidden 15 meters beneath the level of earth. The construction lasted for nine years and costed altogether slightly over uh, 110 million euros, so two times more than uh, House of European history, as we can compare. At that time, it was the Poland's biggest investment in culture. Not surprisingly, it is the main exhibition what forms the core of the museum. Its surface measures more than 6,000 uh, square meters, and it belongs to the biggest exhibitions of that kind in the world. Uh, for instance, the Holocaust uh, Museum in Washington uh, has some uh, 4,000 uh, 4, uh, square meters, the same as uh, Yad Vashem Museum in Jerusalem. Uh, the exhibition consists of 18 thematic zones and depicts the entire world conflict in its full dimension, starting with the historical background dating, dating back uh, to the World War I and ending up, ending up with the long-lasting consequences of the uh, war. It's a unique museum. Never else, uh, nowhere else uh, exists any other exhibition about the Second World War as such. The museum was opened in March 20, seven, uh, 2017 in very specific moment. Uh, one and a half year earlier, the liberal coalition led by the civic platform, Donald Tusk's former party, lost parliamentary elections and the conservative right and justice party came to power. As you can recognize from the cartoon which was drawn in 2008, since the very beginning, this party, which is uh, depicted on, on this cartoon, treated the museum in Gdańsk as one of its principal enemies. It was denounced by its leaders and consorting right-oriented journalists as anti-Polish and built on German order with the purpose of rewriting history of the war. In parliament, the leader of the Right and Justice Party, Jarosław Kaczyński, climbed even a repolonization of the museum, whatever it should mean in practice. We don't know. Some six, uh, or we didn't know at that time, uh, six, uh, some six months after general elections of 2015, which I have already mentioned, the new government launched an extensive campaign to take over the institution. After a year of false accusations against the museum and uh, ourselves, uh, and uh, after uh, one year of semi-legal administrative tricks, the Ministry of culture finally managed to get rid of the museum's directory board, including myself, uh, and uh, get rid of the International Advisory Council. The new director, a fierce adherent of the ruling party, was nominated. He immediately dismissed most of, most of staff and announced that he would introduce substantial corrections to the exhibition. The changes are still being made. Irrespective of many protests of prominent Polish and foreign intellectuals and suing the new director for violation of our 
intellectual rights. We put the case in the court, it's still uh, there. The hostile takeover of the museum was an unprecedented political intervention in the sphere thank you, of public culture, not only in Poland, but also in the whole European Union. The question is, why was the Museum of the Second World War so hot issue for the Polish conservative right? Why the politicians from the Right and Justice Party did so consequently strive to get control over the museum, even though they disagreed totally with its ideas as such? Uh, apart from strictly political reasons, which I'm not going to discuss here, uh, it was first of all the founding concept of the museum itself which outraged the Polish, uh, uh, the Polish right, I believe. Let's have a look on the main features of, of the museum, of, of the exhibition. Since the very beginning of our work, we have built the museum and its main exhibition as a forum, not as a temple. What does it exactly mean, however? A forum is a place where many ideas and thoughts may be discussed and exchanged. It's polyphonic. We can hear different opinions there and perhaps see some problems from another perspective than we, ha we have used to do. A temple commemorates and sacralizes the past. It doesn't offer a space for discussion. Any discussion could be uh, uh, treated as heresy. Uh, it presents historical dogmas to be believed and worshipped. It was not a coincidence that one of the most criticized points in the museum's concept was a sentence. We are not going to build another museum of the Polish military glory or of the Polish martyrdom but an exhibition of universal appeal. Our opponents solemnly rejected this idea. They disagreed with any critical exhibition where the narrative about war might be more complicated than a list of heroic battles and mass executions. Instead of a universal appeal, they demanded a strong focus on the Polish national history. For them, the Museum of the Second World War was a waste of money. They wanted the Museum of Poland in the Second World War. They demanded a temple, not a forum. The over-national perspective, which we applied in the exhibition, met with the strongest criticism. Indeed, we showed in the museum not only history of ethnic Poles, but also of other nations. Some of them, as for instance Jews, were victims. Some other, mostly perpetrators. Some, as for instance Germans, were the enemies of Poland during the war. Other nations, Frenchmen, Britons, Americans or Norwegians, were Polish allies. Russians were both enemies and allies. To include the war experience of all of them in one narrative was obviously an enormous challenge for us as uh, museum makers. But would it be possible to tell the story of Poland in the Second World War without showing at least fates of neighbor nations? This approach didn't of course mean that we neglected history of Poland. In contrary, it remained in the very center of the museum's focus. We have always supposed Polish experience to be unique and extremely important for better understanding of the whole history of the Second World War. One of our strategic goals was to integrate Polish and, broadly speaking, Central European narrative with the master narratives existing or dominating in the West and in the post-Soviet states. Naturally, uh, it cannot be 
achieved without admitting that there were not only Poles who suffered, resisted, or fought. This is why you can see in the exhibition moving testimonies from the besieged Leningrad, personal belongings of Jews murdered by their, their Polish neighbors in the Jedwabne program, pogrom <coughs> in July 1941, or the bell from the German ship uh, Wilhelm Gustloff, which was torpedoed in the Baltic Sea in January 1945 by the Soviet uh, submarine. You can see it on, on uh, the current uh, slide. Uh, this was the biggest catastrophe on the seas ever. Some 10,000 people uh, sunk uh, uh, on the Guslo. The comparative approach was applied in museum on many levels. The highest level includes the most important phenomena. Visitors may compare in the exhibition all three totalitarian regimes which pushed pushed for the war, Stalinism in the Soviet Union, fascism in Italy, and national socialism in Germany. They can see then similarities and differences existing under German, Soviet, and Japanese occupation. The forced migrations during the war and after it have been also presented in a comparative way. The same was done with the civil resistance partisan warfare, or everyday life in occupied Europe. On the lowest level of the narrative, uh, <coughs> narrative objects and personal stories of people have been juxtaposed. Uniforms, soldiers, uh, equip soldiers equipment, emblems, letters writ written to families, uh, do and man sets, ersatz products, food coupons, toys, leaflets, denunciations, uh, clandestine press, and many others. All of them uh, we collected uh, from many countries, showing in this way this uh, various uh, experience, but also similarities existing uh, between particular nations during the war uh, or under the occupation. Needless to say that uh, this comparative approach uh, of the museum has been totally rejected by our opponents. They insisted on the uniqueness of the Polish war experience and condemned any other perspective. For them, any comparison would serve only the interests of Germans and Russians, cunningly erasing differences between aggressors and their victims. Accordingly, we were described by the right-oriented press as the traitors whereas the museum was condemned by it as a tool of the dangerous German historical revisionism. Uh, <clears throat> as you could uh, easily learn uh, by uh, listening to the list of objects uh, which can be seen in the exhibition, the museum of the Second World War hasn't been supposed to be another military museum. Obviously, you will find there are many weapons, including two tanks, a torpedo, and a real-size model of the Stuka dive bomber. But the exhibition doesn't focus on the military campaigns and battles. Instead of that, it confronts the visitors with a variety of problems, threats, or challenges, which our fellow human beings had to cope with during the war. This can be a shortage of food, pauperization, illustrated by this pair of shoes made uh, out of uh, <coughs> tires, uh, living in shelters, loss of the family, or the experience of slavery in a role of forced laborer. Even the situation of inmates uh, in concentration camps, we, have, uh, we try to depict from the grassroots anthropological perspective. And in this way, to avoid uh, using of these great numbers, uh, some six million people died, uh, some uh, two million people were uh, arrested, uh, we always thought that, that it uh, uh, says 
uh, nothing. Uh, so these this big numbers uh, are not uh, able to uh, uh, properly understand by, by average uh, visitor. These are civilians who are the main heroes of our story, as you can see. We set up this pri priority for purpose. The losses uh, among civil population during the Second World War were by far larger than among the soldiers. Civilian, uh, civilians suffered uh, from hunger and cold. They fell victims of bombings and other military operations. Millions of them were expelled from their houses, deported or executed. Usually, these were also civilians who had to pay the highest price for resistance. All of them deserve our memory. To emphasize the importance of civilians' experience, we have decided to tell some individual stories. A good example of it may be a Polish teenager, Zdzisław Wysocki, who died of wounds uh, in September 1939 after the column of refugees in which he marched was suddenly attacked by German planes. He wasn't any well-known hero. You, uh, you don't find any mention uh, about him in any textbook uh, or historical manual. And the memory of him would surely fade away if I didn't know by accident a nice of him who donated to the museum his photos and documents. While speaking about the <coughs> unknown victims of the war, we cannot forget that besides of millions of individuals whose suffering have fallen into oblivion, there were also whole groups whose fates remain almost forgotten, although they were annihilated, persecuted, harassed, or maltreated. In the museum, we decided to bring to light also their stories. One of those groups were handicapped people. At least in Poland, it's hardly known that Nazi regime murdered some 200,000 of them, perceiving them as a living, unworthy of living. Many of them were, exec were executed on the Polish soil. The wheelchair, which you can see on this slide, belonged to one of the victims from the hospital in Kotzborowo, located some 40 kilometers from Gdańsk, where Germans murdered around 10,000 of mentally ill patients. Many of them were, uh, by the way, ethnic Germans, and their only fault was that they didn't fit to Aryan master race. Soviet soldiers who were taken prisoners of war by the German army are another, for, uh, are another forgotten category of victims. In captivity, in absolutely unhuman conditions, more than three million of them died of starvation or were killed. In terms of numbers, they were the second biggest group of war victims after the European Jews. Their tragic fate remains almost unknown, even to well-educated European audience. For us, it was absolutely clear when we were developing the concept of the museum and then its exhibition uh, that uh, it has to tell the story of the Red Army soldiers tragedy, despite of the possibility that some of them probably took part in the Soviet aggressions against, against Poland after 17th September 1939. So they were uh, Poland's enemies. The same as in the case of Germans who sank on the board of the Wilhelm Gustloff, as you could see, we don't judge them. We don't plead them guilty or not. We are not lawyers, but historians. We only show to the visitors that they fell also victims of the conflict. The museum tells also the stories which for decades have been tabooed or simply unnoticed. One of the most delicate of them uh, shows uh, 
the scale, the mass scale of sexual violence during the war. We showed tragedy of thousands of young Korean and Chinese girls who were kidnapped in order to serve as sexual slaves in brothels organized for Japanese soldiers. In Europe, under the German yoke, many Slavic and Jewish women were forced to prostitution too. They were supposed to be a bonus for good working forced laborers and for privileged inmates of concentration camps. Finally, even German women experienced the sexual violence in the last phase of the war. Uh, some estimations says, uh, say that as many as two million of them were raped by the Soviet soldiers, in most cases in a very brutal way. It is very difficult to deal with such a sensitive topic while making uh, the exhibition. There are only few relevant testimonies and almost no artifacts. The objects you can see on this slide we have decided to use after a long consideration. It was made by the Red Army soldier. It doesn't tell itself the story of any rape, but indicates the menace of it. We are afraid that it may be misinterpreted as a ridiculization of sexual violence, but hopefully most of the visitors accepted it. Last but not least, millions of children were also a very important category of war victims. They died of wounds, as we could already see an example of Zdzisław Wysocki, starved to death, or were murdered in mass executions and in gas chambers, sharing the fate of adults. But even those who survived were deprived of their childhood. They suffered terrible stress during bombing of towns and cities. Many of them had to take responsibilities of adults and to earn money or to look for food, although they were young. Many uh, of them witnessed death of their loved ones, as it happened to Polish girl Kazimiera Mika, whose sister was killed in September 39 in Warsaw by German airplane, and to her Russian peer, a girl from Leningrad, Tanya Savicheva, who had to see her family die of starvation. In the museum, we told the touching stories of both of them. Uh, it could be supposed that the museum's focus on civilians should be widely, uh, I'm sorry, uh, should be widely accepted in Poland. Soldiers represented only some 5% among uh, uh, five, and, uh, uh, five million or more than five million of Polish pre-war citizens who died or were killed during the Second World War. However, since the concept of the museum was published in 2008, the civilian perspective was criticized and rejected by the Polish conservative right. It was condemned as our tricky attempt to diminish Poland's input in the Allied victory and to neglect heroism of Polish soldiers. Behind these accusations, you can find a specific interpretation of the war. As one of our opponents wrote, the world, con the world conflict cannot be shown only as tragedy because it was also the time when the characters of individuals got strengthened. Indeed, this kind of vision didn't appear in any place in the exhibition which we designed in Gdańsk. This ideological assumption must have been extremely important for the new director of the museum. The first element of the exhibition, which he removed and replaced with his own material was the final film, the film which ends up the whole path of visiting. Uh, it showed the consequences of the Second World War, but was also a universal anti-war appeal. Instead of it, and irrespective of existing scenography, the new, direct, the new movie was introduced. I hope that that I won't bother you too much showing you both films. They illustrate, in a nutshell, the contradictory visions of Poland's modern history and contentious interpretations of the Second World, World War. 
uh, may we just thank you. And uh, let me share with you uh, uh, one information. So this, this projection was divided into two screens because, because uh, it should uh, uh, represent uh, the history of Europe uh, divided by the Iron Curtain and uh, this dual development on both sides uh, of it, on the west and, uh, and uh, on the east. Uh, and uh, in uh, our uh, initial plans, uh, this presentation uh, was supposed to end uh, in mid of 90s, where Poland and the rest of Central uh, Europe uh, joined European Union and NATO, uh, NATO and then European Union 10 years later. And uh, this was a kind of happy end which we wanted to introduce. But uh, while we were working on the exhibition, we realized that it cannot end with a happy end because there are still threats present in our world which should be addressed in this movie, should be uh, reminded to people who, uh, uh, who just uh, passed through the uh, exhibition devoted to the Second World War. But uh, irrespective of our intentions, this film was uh, criticized as a naive leftist propaganda, uh, anti-war, uh, uh, neglecting the real uh, experience of Poland and uh, Central Europe uh, without uh, real heroes as for instance uh, uh, the US President Ronald Reagan who, who is uh, uh, in a matter of fact not present uh, in, this, in this film. Uh, so it was replaced with another movie uh, which was taken uh, from our uh, Institute, of, Institute of the uh, National Remembrance, which is a state-run institution uh, which deals with the uh, modern history and right now is a very uh, important tool in the hands of uh, the government. Uh, so I'm going right now to show you this next film. No, this is not this one. Can you uh, please just launch it? Thank you. That's our intro. It's, it's not important. Nobody thought the war and its effects would last half a century for Poland. First, Germany attacks. Then Soviet Russia. We don't give up, despite being left on our own. We create an underground state, complete with a government, an army, schools and courts. We suffer two occupations. The Germans murder millions of Polish civilians. The Soviets deport Poles in cattle cars to gulags in the east. They shoot over 20,000 officers during the Katyn massacre. And hundreds of thousands of Poles are forced into slave labor in the inhuman lands of the Soviet Union. Our army is reborn, moving west, where our soldiers are already fighting alongside the Allies. We conquer Monte Cassino. Our fighters wreak havoc and fear by air too. The Germans call us black devils as we crush their resistance. Paratroopers make their way to occupied Poland to support the underground state, while our counterintelligence acquires secret plans of the enemy. There are Poles who save Jews, despite the threat of the death penalty. 
We create resistance movements, even within the German concentration camps. We are the first to alert the world about the Holocaust. Though politics appear to be more important than human lives. And nobody listens to us. Polish Jews fight the Germans in the Warsaw Ghetto without even a chance for success. Our nation comes up from the underground and fights in the Warsaw Uprising. Break the German Enigma code, saving millions of lives. But in exchange for all that we do, we are betrayed. The free world distances itself from us, leaving us behind the Iron Curtain. Despite our scars from the war, we still resist. Hope gives us strength. Workers' strikes spread throughout Poland. The communists lose. The Iron Curtain falls. The war is over. We prevail. Because we do not beg for freedom. We fight for it. As you, as you could see, these were uh, us, we, Poles, who won the Second World War alone. Uh, and uh, you can, of course, uh, compare yourself both films, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, to uh, go into details. Let me only emphasize uh, two, two things, two differences. So one of them uh, is uh, that the first film, uh, the original one, was a polyphonic narrative. And uh, here we can very uh, visible and meaningful shift to the uh, we. Uh, narrative. So this is this is not uh, uh, by coincidence, of course. Uh, this uh, strengthens uh, uh, this uh, uh, feeling of uh, national uh, unity and uh, changes uh, the perspective from the uh, uh, various from the multi perspective into into the, this uh, purely uh, national oriented uh, threat of uh, threat of uh, narrative the second uh, point uh, is that uh, as you could see the second world war uh, lasted according to to this film until 1989 so this is also a vision of the uh, half year of modern history of Poland, which uh, uh, due to this film was only a fight between Poles on the uh, one side and the communist regime uh, on the other. And uh, if you perhaps uh, ask yourself why these were uh, exactly Poles who criticized uh, the House of European History uh, in Brussels, the answer is that uh, uh, they did it because of the uh, uh, because they believed that that history of Poland and of the second uh, of of the second half of the 20th century looked like uh, in this way. But uh, uh, you saw uh, uh, a cartoon, uh, one cartoon. Uh, Few few minutes ago, you can uh, just now see another one. Uh, it was uh, uh, made in 2017, uh, and uh, it shows something what most probably uh, is hidden behind behind uh, the change uh, of film and uh, all uh, conflict uh, around the museum or. Uh, about the museum of the uh, 
Second World War. Uh, perhaps uh, the, the main question uh, is the, uh, the um, conflict uh, about the character of patriotism. Uh, what does it mean to be patriotic? Uh, is it a civic uh, society which uh, has its own values, uh, which uh, it defends uh, and uh, uh, which uh, has uh, its right, for instance, to uh, peace uh, and to maintain peace or uh, to be patriotic means only to fight, uh, to, to fight uh, uh, with the weapon in, in the hand. Uh, this what what you could see says also that uh, perhaps uh, in question is also monopoly of state uh, in the field of historical memory. Uh, the Museum of the Second World War was criticized uh, by the Polish nationalistic right because it broke the monopoly of the uh, uh, right uh, of the Polish right uh, to historical narrative. And when the Right and Justice Party came to power, it wanted to regain control over it, uh, over uh, the history, what uh, it finally managed to do, uh, at least uh, in this case. Then this uh, new model of patriotism, which, which is uh, promoted by our government, has uh, also its uh, very important uh, features. Uh, it ex excludes, for instance, others from the uh, uh, from the from the master master narrative, uh, which uh, focuses on ethnic poles. Uh, please note that that uh, Polish Jews uh, in this last film were mentioned separately. They were not uh, uh, described as the same citizens of 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 pre-war Poland or fighting Poland. Uh, although, uh, of course, uh, it was said that uh, Poles rescued Jews and uh, helped them. What was true, but what it was not only true, because there were also many Poles who uh, blackmailed Jews and helped uh, Germans. Uh, then uh, the second uh, film neglected uh, totally the civilian experience and uh, uh, the role of uh, civic society during uh, the role and emphasized only uh, the uh, uh, war as a fighting. Uh, and uh, in this way, it is also totally contradict to the whole uh, exhibition of the museum uh, as we designed it. And this it's not very consequent, but because at the same time, uh, in this film and uh, in other changes which were introduced in Gdańsk, there is a strong competition of victims. The new director emphasized, emphasizes that uh, uh, these were Poles who suffered very much. Uh, uh, he even uh, removed uh, a statistics uh, which uh, showed uh, the uh, numbers of uh, people in different nations who died or were killed during the Second World War. And he made it, of course, for purpose. Because if you compare uh, those numbers, you get easily that uh, Poland uh, lost some more than 5 million uh, citizens. But for instance, the Soviet Union, more than 20 Seven million, and this is this is uh, uh, this is a difference. So better to uh, skip it. Uh, and finally, I I I was uh, uh, I was uh, thinking for a long time <laughs> whether I should invite you or recommend you to come to Gdańsk or not. I I, I cannot invite you because I am not more uh, uh, the employee of the museum, but but perhaps it still makes makes sense to to come there to see the museum as almost as it looked like before any uh, other more substantial ch changes uh, are introduced. Thank you for your attention.